Now, it's a normal thing for most of us, get on a bus and travel to work. But for many women in Pakistan, this utterly simple and mundane act involves getting harassed, groped and stared at by men. It sounds overblown, but in a country where many women have to fight to be allowed to leave the house alone, taking public transport is a big step. To make this decision easier, Karachi has introduced new pink buses, an exclusive women's only service. DW reporter Pinish Javed was on one to find out what women make of it. This is how most women in Karachi commute. A small women only section is often occupied by men. Shoving and pushing are common. A very uncomfortable and unsafe experience for millions of women. But these new women only pink buses on the roads of Karachi are a relief for many. The buses have better safety systems, such as an emergency exit, lights installed, and also security cameras. And a one-way fare of less than a quarter of a euro is affordable for most women. One of the passengers is 28-year-old pharmacist Aksa, who now commutes to her workplace on the pink buses. Like, uh, when you are going in this bus, you don't have to worry about, you know, taking care of yourself or your clothes or your things. Uh, and you are, you know, stress-free. Sometimes when you are doing a long shift and, you, and then you have to, you know, there is some anxiety in your head that uh, uh, something might happen to you and everything when you are going in the regular bus as compared to this one. Here, you don't have to worry about these things. Many of the women commuting on the bus have experienced harassment on public transport. Once, I was sitting on a bus and a man sitting behind me was touching me. I called him out, but no one there took a stand for me. Sometimes, men enter the women's section if the bus is overcrowded. This is when women experience shoving and pushing by men who do it intentionally, taking advantage. But the initiative is still too small. There are only 19 pink buses for a city of around 20 million people. And sexual harassment is a widespread structural problem. Critics say the government should make efforts to change the attitude of men towards women. The law is there. Um, we just need to somehow encourage people to enforce or to help the government enforce the law by uh, lodging the complaint. Unfortunately, because of the social pressure and the taboo uh, that the society attaches to it, uh, most people are reluctant to actually report such matters. While such instances continue, many women believe the pink buses are at least a first positive step at keeping them safer. And DW reporter Binish Javed filed that story from Karachi and joins me now for more context. Binish, welcome. It sounds utterly basic, but why is discussing a new bus service for women such an important story? Binish, I think it is an important story because most women in Pakistan do not have the luxury of safe public transport. So many women, and there are many areas in Pakistan where public transport is not even available. And if it is available, it is a very difficult experience for women. Women complain of being groped, touched, harassed by men. Um, they complain of facing lewd remarks by men. And not only by male passengers, but also by drivers and conductors. One of the women who was on this pink bus when I was in Karachi, she told me that once a conductor gave uh, his number to her and he was expecting her to call him. Um, and if I talk about my experience, Every time I go to Pakistan and if I have to t take a taxi, almost always I have to tell the taxi driver to not stare at me from the mirror. And taxi is something that most women in Pakistan still can't afford. So they rely on public transport. Um, and I'll also share my experience of using public transport. Many years ago, when I was a bachelor student, I was coming back from Islamabad to my home in Rawalpindi. And um, I wanted to take a bus which was Back, which is full of men, packed with men. And then I thought that maybe I could take a seat with the driver. Maybe it will, I will feel more safe, comfortable. But the entire 45 minutes to one hour, 
the driver kept staring at me, made me really uncomfortable. And when the bus stop came, I took a taxi to go to my home. And when I paid the taxi driver, he literally grabbed my hand. It was a horrible day for me. So we are, this story is important because sexual harassment on public transport is an issue that affects millions of women. And on a daily basis of that. On a daily basis. And given what you're saying, I mean, to what extent are families reluctant to let their daughters and sisters travel alone? So in an average household in Pakistan, honor is associated with women. And then there is a level of um, or a degree of protection that uh, the honor has to be protected. And because public transport is so unsafe, it's out of question for most women and young girls to take public transport on their own alone without accompanying accompanied by their parents or, or father or brother. So that's why most women and young girls end up being dependent on their brothers, fathers, to take them to maybe to a shopping mall, to a supermarket. Um, and uh, because it's so unsafe, I can't imagine a teenage girl in Pakistan being allowed uh, to take public transport alone without being a accompanied by a family member. Yet when you spoke to the advisor to the chief minister of Sindh province, uh, where Karachi is, uh, of which Karachi is the capital, uh, he put the onus on women to complain about the harassment that they face. I mean, is this even a realistic suggestion? I don't think it's a realistic suggestion. And he also mentioned that uh, talking about sexual harassment is a taboo topic. So uh, talking about, complaining about sexual harassment is a very difficult conversation to have. Um, and in, especially in a society like Pakistan, where if a woman speaks up and talks about uh, a man, you know, touching her or harassing her, um, she, she always has this fear that she would be blamed for it. And we also uh, saw in the report that one young woman is saying, that when a man was touching her from behind her seat, uh, seat and she called out at him and she uh, but nobody on the bus uh, spoke up for her uh, which means that um, the, the, there is a there is a certain level of acceptance uh, that this is tolerable um, so I think the um, expecting from women to speak up, and uh, to talk about sexual harassment is not a very practical approach. I also think that access to uh, law enforcement agencies is, is very, it's, it's a very difficult process um, because police would not come to the bus uh, to protect the woman. If a, if a woman has been harassed, she would have to go to the police station to file a report. And even the police is uh, patriarchal. And a, a woman without uh, a man going to a police station is something uh, where she would fear that maybe she would be harassed by the police. Um, and if some women had mustered up courage and they talked about it, they filed the report, if we look at the conviction rate of such cases, it's almost negligible. And just based on what you're saying, I mean, the question really is, are women even able to participate fully in public life, given that there is so many of these restrictions when it comes to just simply taking public transport? I think public spaces in Pakistan are sit still largely dominated by men. It's difficult for women to claim uh, public spaces. Um, and when women do not have access to public transport, their social lives are affected. And very important issue, that is the issue of employment. So women do not, do not have access to employment when they do not have safe public transport. And statistics say that um, only 20% of women uh, uh, are, um, uh, women are uh, work, uh, the uh, part of the workforce of Pakistan. And we also spoke um, to an expert about this. And let's let, have a listen to what she said. A lot of families, they want to educate their daughters, but they're not able to because public transport options are so limited. So now we have a vast section of women in Karachi that are not educated and they weren't able to pursue that. So, Biresh, uh, when you do not have access to safe transport, then it means that you do not uh, have access to schools, you do not have access to colleges. Um, and she's talking about Karachi. Karachi is the largest city of Pakistan. Imagine the state of women and young girls in small towns and villages. For them, it is impossible to even dream to have a career because they simply do not have the opportunities and do not have the access to safe public transport where they can commute to their workplaces. So are services like this women's bus service in Karachi to be rolled out nationwide. Is that the answer? Personally speaking, I like the project. Uh, and 
most of the women that I, actually every woman that I spoke to, uh, she was very, they were happy, they were, uh, they were appreciative of this project. But it's not a sustainable project. It's difficult to expand this project because, the, and even now there are only 19 pink buses for a city of almost 20 million people. So majority of the women do not have access to uh, pink buses. There are three uh, uh, pink buses that now run um, in a city close by to Karachi, but it's a very expensive project that requires millions of euros. So it's, I don't see for a country like Pakistan that it's a very practical uh, project, but um, unfortunately, I don't think that it's expandable at least when we look at the economic situation of the country now. Let's look at what is sustainable because providing a service is one thing, changing attitudes, societal attitudes, and particularly men's attitudes is another. Any plans on that front from the government? So when we see um, other provinces, there are some government uh, sponsored programs that aim to support women's mobility. But when it comes to changing attitude of men towards women, there are hardly any efforts. And I also think it's a system, system, systemic problem that exists in uh, Pakistan. When we look at the leaders at very top positions in the country, even they are patriarchal in their approach. You would uh, listen to um, derogatory remarks by them about women. And right. I'll give you an example. One politician from Karachi, um, his uh, video is being circulated on social media and, and he's talking about politics. But in, in, this, in his interview, he's giving, he, he gives an example and says that if you are being raped, enjoy it. Right. So that kind of insensitivity exists among men. So I don't think there, there are any efforts being made to change right. attitude of men because they are dominated, they are ruling the country, uh, even in the households, even at public uh, offices. Um, and even if there are some right. movements to um, uh, change attitude of men towards women, they often get a lot of resistance uh, from the society. Finish, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for coming in for this very important subject. Welcome.